How's it going, everyone? How's it going with you, Mike? It's been uh, been been, been uh, ten months since you've had a chance to compete. So what's what's the feeling like right now? It's been a while, yeah. I mean, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, you know, a couple of setbacks, but you know, I'm I'm in great shape, the best shape of my life, probably, and I'm ready ready to get in the cage. You know, I've been like a caged animal, and I'm good I'm good to go now. You know. Yeah, you were lined up in January, weren't able to compete. Uh, a COVID test, right? Was it, it was just somebody on the team, though, right? Did you did you suffer any consequences at all, or? I was okay. One of the team team had it, you know. So um, obviously, I, I couldn't come out and and fight. It was a bit of a, you know, it was a, it was a tough time, because obviously, you know, we, although I want to fight as much as I possibly can, it's also how we um, earn our living and how I support my family. So um, yeah, it was tough. I was gonna say, what is that situation like, right? I mean, you're 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 getting prepared. It's a big moment, like I said. It's, your, it's the way you support yourself, and then it's all just goes away. I mean, is that tough to, to deal with for you? It does yeah. I mean, like I said, I got I got my results the night time the same day we got got tested, and then I had a lot of missed calls in the morning to uh, my coach and to you know the UFC and stuff, and I rung them back and they said the news, and you know I was distraught. You know, I was I was in tears. I'll be honest. You know, because a lot of um, a lot of prep time and preparation went in that over Christmas. You know, I spent a lot of a lot of time training over Christmas Day and Boxing Day. A lot of the special times you would have with your family, and um, you know, I was I was out training them days. I'm very dedicated, dedicated my life to this sport, and you know, I I, f I feel that it's gonna you know it happened for a reason. Look at me now. I'm on UFC 262 and I'm fighting Lando Venata. It's another good name. So you know, it's it's happened for a good reason as well. But you know, I was still like that fight. Nick Lentz. He's obviously retired now, but. You know, it's, it's still a fight I would like to have, but I'm happy. I'm happy now, and I'm good to go. Was there hope that you'd get booked sooner, that you could turn things around faster? Yeah, it would have been nice. You know, I mean, soon as I, soon as I got home, I carried on training again and stuff. So I was good to go, like whenever really. But it's just kind of happened now, you know. Yeah, I do wonder if there's any benefits. I mean, I guess you got to travel, whether it's Abu Dhabi or here. You got to travel, but is it is it better here because? You know, the situation in Abu Dhabi is a little bit tougher, right? There's a lot of restrictions and that sort of thing. So is this like a, a better or, or does it matter? It doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm, I'm happy, you know, I'm, I'm excited to make my USA debut. You know, this is the first time I'm going to fight in America and Texas, sell out crowd. And, you know, it's, there's not been no crowds. I've not fought in front of a crowd for two and a half years now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to have that feeling as well. Right. What do you make of Lando as an opponent, right? He's got this weird career, just ups and downs. I, I guess you've had a weird career too, yeah. kind of some ups and downs. So, what, what do you think about him as a, as a fighter and what he brings to the table? You know, he thinks he brings a wild striking style. He's pretty tough. He's been in there against some decent fighters. You know, Tony Ferguson's on the card on Saturday, and he's been against him. And you know, he had a great fight against him. I watched that fight. I was a fan of that fight. But you know, he's he's, he's not fought anyone like me. I know they're great names, but I'm I bring a different kind of pressure. And uh, how's he going to deal with that? We'll see on the, on Saturday night. Yeah. And I guess I did want to ask you, like, how you feel about your career as a whole, right? Like, I feel like snake bitten a little bit or a little bit cursed, you know what I mean? Do you ever sit back and go, like, what, what, what's what's the deal? Do I have bad luck or what's going on? Yeah, I have done, but, you know, what? I'm that kind of person. And I think, like I said, everything happens for a reason. You know, I mean, before I got into the FC, I was fighting sometimes four to five times a year. So, yeah, it's unusual for me that I've only had two, three, two fights. I'm on my third fight in two years in the UFC. So, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer, but... Like I said, it happens for a reason. And Saturday night, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to make it all better. Last thing for me, I was going to ask. I mean, it sounds like you're taking it on stride, but do you feel like you need to go out there and do something? I mean, I feel like you, you had this buzz around you when you came into the UFC, and just because of the delays, it's just kind of slowed down a little bit. So do you feel like you need to go out there and, like, remind people who you are or, or make some kind of statement, like you said? I mean, it won't put any extra pressure on me. I'll just let my body do the work and, you know, I've, I've practiced, I've trained hard. Everything's already in place, so what will happen will happen, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I'll make a statement on Saturday night. Mike, uh, it's dead center. Right? Uh, Lando's obviously known for his spectacular knockouts, his flashy style of striking. You're, of course, known for your wrestling. Have you seen anything from him to that... Like, do, do you see any strengths in his grappling and wrestling game outside of his striking? Looks like he's got okay stri um, wrestling and grappling, but he's not as good as mine. He's not on my level, so I'm confident that I win that area. And then he's dropping to 145 for this fight after fighting some his most of his career at 155. Do you think his body is going to be able to handle that weight cut uh, in a, against a style like yours in there? Exactly like you said, you know, the style like mine is what makes the difference. I mean, yeah, he's... He might make with featherweight okay because he didn't seem like a very big lightweight, but 
it's that mental stress that you've got to put under when you cut. We might, you've got to be used to it. I'm used to it. I've done it all my career. I've done it all my wrestling career. So I'm definitely used to it. You know, I've got the experience in that side of things and the pressure that I'm going to put on him, the dominance. And, uh, you know, I'm going to chip away at his soul. Then, you know, he's, he's going he's gonna to definitely um, crumble. And then you mentioned this was your U.S. debut, correct? It is, yeah. In Texas. Texas, Texan fans in general are a little more outspoken than most yeah. American fans. Have you run into any? Yes, yeah, right here. <laughs> Have you run, run into any uh, interesting characters out here in Houston? I haven't, no, not just yet. I mean, I've been here since Sunday, but we've not had a chance to obviously go around and look around and see, see things because, you know, we've got to stay in the hotel and stay away from that COVID. We don't want no, no more setbacks. No more setbacks. Right, going from Texas to talking about a more civilized city, apparently the UFC are returning to London in August later this year, or there's at least talks about it. I don't know if you want to even look past this weekend, but would you like to get on that card if you could? 100%. I want to make up for lost time. I want to get in, get in this Saturday night, make a statement, get a good win, and then I want to be in London if it happens. Obviously, they're two very different fighters, but your last, out go, uh, your last outing against Movsar Ibloev, Frustrating fight, obviously. Were there any takeaways from that that you feel you can bring into this fight that will make you better prepared to deal with Venata? Yeah, I mean, as soon as I got back, like, the kind of person I am, you know, I, I didn't, I mean, I, had, I brought my jaw that fight, uh, went and had an operation straight away, but I was back training the day after I was jogging. But um, main thing, what I was doing, I was working on my mistakes and um, speaking to my coach straight away. And, you know, and I've, I've definitely learned a lot from that fight. And there's, I've looked at, looked back at it, and you know, there's a few things I did do wrong in the fight as well. But I've corrected them, and I'm good to go. You know. I mean, would you be willing to go into any detail on that when you look back at that fight? Were there things that you definitely would do different? Uh, you know, if you had it again. It's just well, first of all, the you know the choke I had in the first round. Um, it was a shallow dash choke that I, that I kind of grabbed my forearm rather than grabbing my bicep. That was the mistake I made on that that side of things. But he, you know, he obviously practiced for it and. You know, he's obviously very good at getting out of chokes. I mean, he fought Nick Lentz after that, and he got out of a couple of chokes there. So, But um, I'm not going into too much detail, but I've definitely figured out some problems after that fight. Thank you. We're good. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.